Okay, the ejection canisters. Um, now you can use other ejection canisters. You can use the ones from Pratt Hobbies. Um, I prefer just to make my own because I'm cheap. Um, so you're going to take a rubber glove. You can see I already cut the fingers off of this one. Um, we're going to use a finger as our ejection canister. And basically you just cut the, the finger off. I'm going to need two of them because I've got one on each side. Now this is the ejection canisters and basically what's going to happen is it's going to go into here with some black powder. Now I don't have black powder with me because I'm indoors so I've got some sand and this is just some sand and it's just going to simulate my black powder. Now you're going to want to weigh out the black powder. Um, typically on a small rocket you're going to want to use less than a half of a gram. Um, this is probably too much if this was black powder. Um, it doesn't take a lot of black powder because we we only need to pressurize a small area. So if you use too much black powder, you're going to explode your rocket apart and the things are going to break. Uh, probably you're going to rip the shock cord out of the, uh, the loop right here. That's typically where it's going to break if it's going to break. So very, be very careful with how much black powder you use. Now the black powder needs to go inside the should have got a piece of paper. Uh, I don't have a piece of paper here. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, so I'm just going to take my simulated black powder and put it on a piece of paper, fold it. Now I got some way to pour it in there. Okay, so this is an ejection canister, <laughs> simulated, and you're going to stick it in your over the igniter. You're going to do you're going to do this twice. You want to get that igniter all the way down to the bottom, and you want to get the black powder all the way down to the bottom. And then you're going to take a piece of string, and it's approximately three inches long, and you're going to wrap that around. And this helps to have a friend help you here. It's kind of like wrapping a Christmas present where you need somebody's finger so you can get it nice and tight. Same concept here. Okay, now make sure that that igniter is all the way at the bottom. Again, this is where it helps to have longer wires. I'm kind of fighting this. But I want to show you that it can be done. I missed! Okay, so putting the igniter, maybe my canister is too big, so I'm going to cut off some. Maybe that make it easier for me. Oh, my black powder is leaking out. Fortunately, it's just sand, right? Ah, I just dumped all my black powder. I'm sure somebody's going to write in and tell me an easier way to do this. So if you have an easier way, write in and we'll share it with everybody else. Again, longer igniters. Or have a friend help you. <laughs> Give me a longer string. Yay! 
Yay, I did it. I only spilled half of my black powder. Okay, so you're going to do this. And that is the first um, ejection canister. And these actually work pretty good as, as ejection canisters. If you don't spill all your black powder, um, you can cut off the excess string. Like that. And this one is going to go into here. Remember to put in your wadding first. And then you'll put in your coupler like that. And you're going to rotate it around until you get the hole to line up. And this is my switch hole. And there's three other holes. And those are for the removable rivets. And these allow you to um, take this tube on and off. So you'll push the rivet in. It's got two parts. Let me take that part so you can see it. Two parts, just like that. So I'm going to take the rivets and don't push it in all the way. Just kind of push it in halfway first then push it into the hole. Push it down and now press hard. And when you do that, it expands the little feet on the other end and it locks it in place. So there's two. And there's three. Okay. Let me get this sand out of the way like that. Okay. Now if you want to take it apart, you just get your fingernail underneath there, pull the top out, and you can pull the whole thing out because once you start pulling it out, uh, the fingers will go back together. But that locks everything in place so you can, um, keeps everything so only the parachute's going to come out the nose like this instead of the uh, coupler coming out. And we still have a hole here that we can turn it on. When you get out to the launch pad, you'll just push the button and it starts up your altimeter. Um, so now you'll do the same thing with the other ejection canister, which is a tip of a finger from a rubber glove and the black powder. So imagine that's there and you want to lay that as close to the side as possible. Now on this end, for such a small rocket, um, we don't want to use an, a parachute because um, it's going to drift and that defeats the purpose of dual deployment. Now you could attach a streamer here um, or you could do a technique that's called drogless recovery. And drogless recovery means you're just using the shock cord to keep everything together um, and with no streamer, no parachute, this thing's going to fall like a rock. Essentially the shock cord becomes the streamer. So at ejection, it's going to blow it apart like this. So I could put everything in together. Now if I was using a streamer, I need to put wadding into the tube and I need to put it in two places. I need to push it down to the bottom because the ejection charge of the engine is going to blow off too. And then I need to put a piece between my ejection canister here and the streamer. So the streamer is going to go in the middle between two layers of wadding. But if you're not using any streamer, when you're just using drogless like this one is right now, I don't need any wadding at all because there's nothing inside to burn. So then this would go there like that. So essentially the rocket is ready to fly. Uh, we just put in our rocket motor um, and then turn it on and um, fly the rocket. Now, two things that you need to, to remember first. Um, one is you're going to have to reset your altimeter um, for the main parachute. Because this rocket is smaller, it's not going to go as high as a typical high power rocket. So typically a, a high power rocket deploys the main uh, somewhere between 600 and 900 feet in altitude. If this rocket doesn't go that high, the main is going to come off, it's going to eject too early, it's going to come out at apogee and now your rocket's going to drift and that defeats the purpose. So you need to reset the altimeter and check your altimeter instructions on how to reset the altimeter. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to move the main deployment down from, if it was 900 to begin with, you're going to move it down to a lower altitude, maybe like 300 feet. 
uh, your rocket has to go that high or that or you're not going to see dual deployment and the second thing is you need to choose a rocket engine with a really long delay if you choose a short delay the rocket's going to go up it's going to pop this out too early um, and if you're testing the um, altitude el um, the apogee ejection charge you want to see that work so if you choose a long delay it goes over the top and so now if it fires off you know it was this charge and not the rocket motor so if everything works correctly what's going to happen is the rocket's going to go up hits apogee it separates because this charge goes off and then it starts coming down and you know and if this is set for seven seconds it's starting to come down and you're going to hear a second Poof, which means this ejection charge went off and it's still falling down and then when the main you know gets down to that low altitude maybe it was 300 whatever you set it at then this comes out pulls the parachute out and now this deploys and so that's how dual deployment works so if you have any questions read the manual first if you still have questions after that then give us a call but read the manual first because we're limited on staff and how many questions we can answer at any one time. So my name again is Tim Van Milligan and come to the Apogee website at www.apogeerockets.com.